Please stand and join in singing, I am the bread of life.
peace be with you. We gather to say farewell to uh, Brother Priest, uh, pastor, friend, a brother, son, someone we love very dearly and whom we will very much miss. Uh, he was a great priest and uh, he leaves a big gap in terms of our lives and circumstances. I want to thank, uh, in a special way at the beginning here, Father Anthony Ferguson and Father Kyle O'Connor, who is the parochial vicars here, who have been helping respond to the needs of this community in this time of uh, loss. Very grateful for those who are assisting here, our deacons, Deacon Greg uh, Ballantyne, and Deacon D Jim Findlay, Deacon Fred Rodden Rodinger, Deacon Bill Water Westerman, who serve here at St. Bede's, as well as the staff of St. Bede's, and all that they've been doing these days, uh, their time and attention. Very special greeting and words of sympathy and prayer for the family of Father Joe, <clears throat> especially uh, his mother, Beverly. Uh, have some words later in terms of to, to the family and everyone gathered here as well at the end of the Mass. To Chris, Ann, Teresa, his sisters, to John and Tim, his brothers, uh, we share with you this sense of loss. Very grateful for the presence of our ecumenical uh, community, the, those who are gathered, uh, part of the, the Larkham, I guess that's the Lutheran, Anglican, as well as United Methodist, as well as other faith communities who are gathered here. Uh, Father Joe had a great love for ecumenical and interfaith work. He dedicated so much time and attention to it. We're grateful for your presence here and your prayers as well. And for all others gathered here. Our brother Joseph has died with the Lord, so may he live with him in glory. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Joseph, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
Tu eres sacerdote eterno, según el rito de Melquisedec. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Tu eres sacerdote eterno, según el rito de Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord's revelation to my Lord sit at my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. Tu eres sacerdote eterno según el rito de Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Desde Sion extenderá el Señor el poder de tu cetro somente en la batalla de tus enemigos. Tu eres sacerdote eterno según el rito de With you is princely rule on the day of your power in holy splendor from the womb before the dawn I have begotten you. Tu eres sacerdote eterno según el rito de Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. El Señor lo ha jurado y no será Tu eres sacerdote eterno, según el rito de Melchizedek. Tu eres sacerdote eterno, según el rito de A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? 
He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is God who acquits us, and it is Christ who died, rather was raised, who is also at the right hand of the Father, who intercedes for us. What then will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish? Will distress? Persecution? Will famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, that my joy may be with you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because slaves does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. So whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you. Love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
54 years ago. That's when we first met, as punky little high school kids, although I was a little more mature. I was a junior, Joe was a freshman. And it was interesting to think back, and when I saw him today, it, I was still in disbelief. The ultimate descriptor for Joe Lehman is alive. And to see him not alive was jarring. And I can only imagine what all of you in this church are feeling now. Beverly, you have given in so much to this family, to this church, to the world, and you hold so much grief at the same time. And Chris, Teresa, Tim, John, your brother, so lively, so alive, despite some of your best efforts of controlling him and containing him. And that's something about being raised in a large family, that you shaped his life early. Any person who lives in a large family, six, six kids, understands three things quickly. One, you have, to, you have to sort of create your own territory. Bring whatever uniqueness you have to demonstrate yourself within the competition of everybody else. You also learn humility because in a large family, anyone who wants to be on a high horse is knocked down quickly. You need to stay grounded. And the third thing you come to appreciate that you always need each other. You belong to each other. And indeed, that sense of belonging, that sense of family, shaped Joe so much. He also was very much affected by your own faithfulness, your own care for the church, your own involvement in the parish. Everything he saw you do was good and solid and natural and well-balanced. The idea that he even said, I'd like to be a priest because it's not a weird thing or a different thing. It's just natural. I'm drawn to the way my family life came alive in the faith. Moving on, therefore, into St. John's in high school, the sense of community, as all high school people feel, and then St. Meinrad. And joining the Benedictines at St. Meinrad was a profound sense that really shaped his own identity, his spiritual, if you will, bearings. This idea of the Benedictines as a monastic community of prayer and work, ora et labora. That the idea that we live in community, we cannot afford to live outside of community, and that everything about life is filled with the glory of God. Prayer. I mean, I thought I was back at St. Minard walking into this church and listening to the bell. The space itself was sacred and good, and yet so ordinary and approachable. We talk about labora, not in terms of work, of tasks, but the work of our creativity, our energy, that we put ourselves out, we apply ourselves for the good of all, the common good, the blessings of God's holy people. You nurtured him and you formed him, and then he was shaped and he was molded into a new person called to ministry. As he was ordained, therefore, 41 years ago and moved into ministry, I cannot help but think that, as you know, in college, there is a kind of distancing, you know, from family. When your kids go off to college, they're entering into a new world. And there's a little tension with that. But when he got into ministry, that was a profoundly different world than it used to be with family. And after talking to you last night, Beverly, I immediately thought of a saying in scripture. When Jesus is preaching and talking and speaking about the kingdom of God to everybody gathered, Jesus is interrupted and said, oh, by the way, your mother and your family's outside waiting. 
And of course, Jesus' response is, who is my mother and brother? Who is my family? But all of these who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Now, Matthew doesn't tell us what Mary's response was when she heard that. <laughs> but if Mary is like you, Beverly, I know what she said. That's my boy. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's why you have the life and the blessings that you have. For Joe, indeed, coming into ministry, his affective style of reaching people was immediate. He jumped into Holy Cross and Christ the King. He was very much involved in Bedford and, of course, in Roanoke and, and Rocky Mount and all the different places he served, finally coming here after Nazareth to St. Bede's. And one of the markers of, of, Joe, of Joe Lehman was the sense that he had a relationship with God that was unshakable. I really appreciate the gospel you chose, Anne, of John with his disciples. And as we all know ourselves, that passage a lot of times is sort of watered down. I call you my friends, yeah, 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 yeah. We know what friends are like. It's sort of a more of an emotional kind of word and we don't look at it until you drill down into the readings a little bit more. Jesus earlier in John's gospel says to his disciples, I am your teacher. I am your master. You are my servants. You are my students. I do not take away what I am to you, but rather I add more to that. After he washes the feet of his disciples, and you know good old Peter, no, not I. And Jesus says, well, then you can't be of my company. You cannot be with me unless you're humble enough to receive the gift I give you. Humble enough to receive the gift I give you. A lot of us have a problem with that. We like to earn things, but to be gifted is a bigger challenge. Jesus in today's gospel, therefore, says to his disciples, I call you friends. What does that mean? Because a friend knows everything about the other. An employee doesn't know what's going on in the minds of the employer. A boss does not share everything. A teacher doesn't share everything with the students. There is a guard of information except in friendship. And indeed, the friendship of Jesus that he reveals to his disciples is the incredible love that Jesus has with the Father. I want you to know who I am with the Father. And I want you involved in the fullness of my relationship with the Father. Jesus says to his disciples, I hide nothing from you. And if you believe me, if you trust me, if you love me, you will be transformed by this and you will love one another as I have loved you. Ministry for Father Joe was always about the communication of that divine love, that hope, and it's not an easy thing to do because you all know as well as I do. We can believe a lot of things. But if we cannot love and we cannot trust, all our belief is for naught. The relationship with Jesus is crucial. And indeed, for Father Joe, he was so confident in his relationship with Christ that in his own way, he was constantly stretching the boundaries of who belongs, who was not judged, who is accepted, who is valued, who has dignity. Many times I've seen him in action. He could relate, and this is the key thing, he could relate to his best friends in other parts of the country from Rome. Or he could relate 
to the parish council president or he could relate to somebody on the street or he could relate to the brand new parishioner. And he related to them the same way all the time. Joe did not have multiple roles, but he had a heart for everyone. Why? Because he knew Jesus had a heart for him. Who can we be afraid of when we are in the love of God? Who can threaten us when we trust that God is good for God's word? How can we be afraid when indeed in God there is nothing but the expansiveness of eternal life? We were told, weren't we, just a few weeks ago? You do not know the moment or the hour. hour. And most of us in there probably are afraid of that. Joe wasn't. Father Joe was not afraid of that. I'm really happy he made that cruise. I am selfish enough to say, I really wish he wasn't gone yet. But I know where he went. I know what his faith is. And indeed, the outreach to everyone and his sensitivity to people on the outside of whatever the given line is, as you all know, was very clear. We get in trouble when we keep on playing the lowest common denominator. We are faithful to the Lord Jesus when we keep on moving toward the kingdom of God. And all that that means for us, for if we follow Jesus, we are about the vision and the hope and the love of God. I don't know what Joe's up to now, but I'm sure he's checking out the Italian wedding soup or whatever he likes to create. I do know very much that your family has gone through so much and in your faithfulness, you have demonstrated a strength that we belong to one another. We belong to Christ Jesus. We belong indeed to the power of God's eternal life for us all. May God's blessing be with you. Please stand. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. For our brother Joseph, who was given the pledge of eternal life and baptism, may he now be admitted into the company of your saints. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For Father Joe's family, his mother Beverly, his sisters Chris, Anne, and Teresa, and his brothers John and Tim, may they find joy knowing that Father Joe believed in the resurrection of the dead and life eternal. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you, for Father Joe's parishes, including St. Bede and Our Lady of Nazareth, may those faithful be comforted in this great loss of their pastor and know of God's everlasting care for them and for his servant. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For the Diocese of Richmond and Father Joe's brother priests, May they be strengthened in their ministry as they reflect on his faithful and humble service to the church and the people of God. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For those of other faith traditions, 
May they celebrate Father Joe's work with them to foster Christ's call that all may be one. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, be us to hear our prayer. For the people of Haiti, especially our twin parish of St. Joseph and all the underserved in the world, may our hearts be filled with generosity and care for them. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, be us to hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of rising again, may they arise to see new life in your holy presence. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, be us to hear our prayer. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them sharers in your redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Joseph, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and ever eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bede and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Joseph Patrick, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and, all, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your, to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thanks, Amelie.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Joseph, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. I'm Father Robert Zupfel, a priest of the Diocese of Buffalo, and I'm grateful and humbled to have been asked by Father Joe's family to say a few words on behalf of his many friends. There's a group of classmates we've been getting together for about 40 years, every the end of August, every year. And for the last several years, we've been coming here to your beautiful state, up in Smith Mountain Lake. It's a wonderful time. We get together and we talk and we do nothing. <laughs> and after about 40 years, we're getting really good at doing nothing. So my family asks, well, what do you do when you go up there with your classmates? It's pretty rural, right? Yeah, it's pretty rural. Well, what do you do? Nothing. <laughs> well, tell me what your day is like. Well, we usually get up and Everybody makes a little bit of breakfast, and then we have lunch down on the dock. Then we take naps. <laughs> the older we get, the longer the naps are. And to be honest, lately, mid-morning naps, too. But in late afternoon, we gather for prayer. We celebrate Mass every day. We pray for our families and friends. We pray for our classmates, several who, along with Joe now, who have gone to the Lord. We pray for our brother priests in our dioceses. We're all from different dioceses. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. It's an important part of our day. We pray with gratitude for our hosts who welcome us there to Smith Mountain Lake. And thinking about offering you a little bit of thought, I thought of us praying together the Mass. And there's a part of Mass that we enter into dialogue. And maybe because we say it every time at Mass, that little bit of dialogue can sort of slip by without us noticing it. Yet, from every church, from every place, Mass is celebrated. People gather to celebrate the Eucharist. This same dialogue takes place. It echoes throughout the centuries and throughout the world. It begins, the Lord be with you, the priest says. And the people respond, and with your spirit. When the priest says this, it's, it's a prayer, like, may the Lord be with you. It's a blessing. The priest is doing what a priest needs to do, to remind people that they're blessed, to bless them in the name of the Lord. Father Joe knew this. It's what his whole ministry was about, bringing God's blessings to others. But the response is important, too and with your spirit. The response from the congregation is, is a blessing from them to their priests. They're saying, be strong, Father. They're saying, thank you, Father. They're saying, teach us, Father. They're saying, thank you, Father, for the blessings that you bring, and with your spirit. And then the dialogue continues. Lift up your hearts. And the response, we lift them up to the Lord goes right to what Jesus said, right? Love the Lord your God with your whole heart and mind and self and life. This is the kind of priest Father Joe was. He put his heart into it. He had a big heart. When he lifted up his heart to the Lord, that was a heavy lift. We know this. 
He had a passion for, for ministry, for priesthood, a love for the Lord and a love for the church. We have lifted them up to the Lord is the response. Hearts lifted to the Lord. That we part was an essential part for Father Joe. We lift them up to the Lord. It was a togetherness. As Father Grace said, learned at home how to build community, how to be loving with one another, forgiving of each other. And for Father Joe as a priest, to bring God's mercy and his love and his compassion as we, priests and people, lift their hearts to the Lord. And then where do we go from here? That last little bit of dialogue points us tonight in the right direction. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. That's where we go. We go with grateful hearts. Grateful heart cures many things. It cures the ups and downs, the ins and outs of life. It cures the crosses in our life, the heartaches and the losses, and tempers the graced moments. To have a grateful heart is to remember that all good things come from God who loves us. And Father Joe reminded us of that. It wasn't so much him, but is what he did in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so today, we remember with grateful hearts, for it is right and just that we do so. Grateful for his life, grateful for his priesthood, his friendship, grateful for his love and for the love of God, which he reflected each day. God is good. And so, as always, we praise the Lord for his goodness. We leave here tonight with grateful hearts and a prayer. A prayer for Father Joe, one we hope that he hears quickly. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter now the kingdom of our Father. God bless you. Remain seated for a moment, just. Father Grace, Monsignor Zephal, thank you very much for those beautiful reflections as both a classmate and friend for Joe all these years, uh, such beautiful insights and expressions of affection and remembrances of Joe. So we're grateful for that. I've only been bishop here for five years, and so I got to know Joe just uh, upon arrival here when I went out west to visit the parishes there. So the first thing I got to know him in the terms of the context was hospitality. He provided the, the house where I could stay as I traveled around. And of course, after doing confirmations or visits, come back to the house and there was a nice digestivi, a nice Benedictine to finish the evening and kind of rest the, before going out again the next day. Very grateful for that kindness and hospitality. Uh, I knew Joe also as someone with generous sacrificial service. Beverly, you'd mentioned uh, that uh, when he was very young, you had offered a prayer dedication of him to Our Lady. And um, that was the key right there. The key to his own dedication as a priest, his giving his life over to the church, and your own giving him over as a family to the church uh, as a priest. And then more recently, when I asked him to move from the West, a familiar territory for many years, and uh, so close to family, here to St. Bede's, and he moved with generous sacrificial love uh, to come here and to serve wherever he was called. I'm very grateful for that, and I know you are too as well. And of course, here we are in the season of Advent, a uh, time of joy and hope and anticipation of the coming of the Lord, Gaudium et Spes, and uh, that's that document, Gaudium et Spes, the pastoral constitution of the church in the modern world, was one of the last in the Vatican Council and really kind of gave a pastoral kind of sense and direction for the church's life. And that was very much all of Father Joe's experience in seminary, formation, priesthood, was that pastoral generosity and caring for God's people uh, throughout wherever he was assigned and wherever he worked. And that was the sense I had from him, always of joy and hope 
he was always uplifting in the encounter. I know that's how I remember him, so I'm very grateful for that. And I know you remember him as well, with those many remembrances of affection, and we all pray together, pray for him, even as we ask for his prayers for us, that uh, in mutual support for one another, that he will go to God. You've given him over to the church, now you give him over to God, as we all do, and uh, we ask for those prayers. Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Joseph in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Joseph in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. <laughs>